Let's have a look at this here. We have A anded with B and C, and you can see that the B and the C are actually in brackets. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the A and I'm going to and it with the B. And the reason I'm anding it is we can see here we have the and symbol. So that's going to equal on this side A and B. Then I'm going to take the A again and this time I'm going to and the A with the C because you can see there we have the and symbol. So that here will give us A and C. And of course here we have the AND symbol, so we will have the AND appearing here. And we'll put those in brackets to emphasise the fact that we've ANDed the A with the B and then we've ANDed the A with the C. If I now come down here and rewrite this in the brackets out again, where I have the A and the B ANDed with the A and the C, what I can do here I can have a look and see that both brackets have the A in common. Here, there's the A and there the A there. Now it's as if I can bring this outside of the brackets as follows. I can say, let's take the A, which is common to them both, and then AND it with the brackets. And what's in the brackets, well obviously what we have in the brackets, is the B and the C. So we can write that as B and C. And what we've just seen, we've seen me taking the boolean that we started off with at the top here and I've applied an appropriate law to it and then I've taken what I've derived here and took the A outside of the brackets as you can see here. Now this is another example of a distributive law. Here we can see I have two incomplete truth tables for three input variables A, B and C. Now here we can see I have got a column called B and C, okay, which is this column here. And that equates to this, B and C. So there's a relationship there. I'm looking at what B and C actually is. And I'm going to have a look at the output for the input variables B and C. Well, if I have a look at the first two, I can see that B is a 0 and C is a 0. So that tells me straight away that this must be a 0 because we need both B and C to be a 1 for the output to be a 1. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly come down and look for the condition where both of them are actually 1. And I can see that that condition is here, so that would be a 1. And if I scan down again, I can see here that I have both of them as being a 1. So this here would be a 1. Now all of the others would be a 0 because we do not have a condition where both B and C are a 1. So they would actually be a 0. What I'm now interested in is this column here. Now this is anding the A with the B and the C. And there's the AND symbol in the middle. So the columns I'm looking at now is this one here, as you can see, that I'm highlighting with these two arrows. And I'm going to be anding that with this column here, the B and the C column. So I'll do the first one. There I can see that A is a 0. And here I can see that the result of B and C is a 0. Consequently, here I will have A0. And I can look at each one in turn, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to scan down and look for the condition where A is a 1 and also the result of B and C is a 1. And I can see I have that condition here and I have that condition here. So what I can say is that is a 1. And if you quickly look at all of the other A's, well, you see A is a 0 there. So that definitely means that this is going to be a zero in all of those three conditions because one of them is a zero, which means we cannot possibly have two ones if you can see that they're a zero there. And if I scan down again at here, I can see I've got three ones. So if I now have a look at what I've got here, well, there are three zeros. So it's impossible for there to be a one at the output. So I'll make those all zeros there. Let's have a look at the other truth table now. And in particular, I'm going to be having a look at this column here, the column where I have A and B, as you can see there. Now that is related to this over here. And I'll just draw a line between them so we can see what we're looking at. 
Now the first thing I need to do is to add together the A and the B. Well straight away if I have a look here I can see that A is a zero in all of those positions there. So that means that this must be a zero all the way down to here. It's not possible for it to be a one. Now I'm going to scan down now and have a look at where they're both ones. And here I can see they're both ones. So that would be a one. And also here I can see they're both ones. Consequently, that would be a one. And the other two conditions of A and B are actually shown here. So we'll have a zero and a zero in those positions. Now we're going to have a look at this column here where we have A and C. And that corresponds to this over here, look, A and C. And if I just draw a line between them so we can see what the relationship is. And now what I'm going to do is to have a look at when A and C are my inputs. Well, there's A there and there's C. Now, obviously, that will give me a zero here. Now, I'm going to quickly scan down and see where both A and C are both ones. And I can see I have it in that position there, as you can see. So this will be a one here. And if I have another look, I can see I have C as a one here and A as a one. So that will be a 1. And a quick look down, I can see that there is no other position where A and C are indeed a 1. So I'll make all of the others here actually a 0, as you can see there. What we've now got is this column here. And we can see that I'm adding the brackets A and B, these brackets here, with these brackets here A and C. And there's my AND symbol in the middle. So what I now do, I and the A and the B column with the A and the C column. And I can see that that first one there is actually a zero. The second one gives us a zero here. And if I scan down, I can see the only occasion where they're both one is here. So that gives me a one there. And all the other conditions will actually give me a zero. And now if I have a look at this column over here, and have a look at this column that I've just re reproduced here, we can see they're identical. Consequently, we can say this. We can say if they're identical, and the first column is A anded with B and C, and the second column is, in fact, A and B anded with uh, A and C, they must be the same. And we've done this using uh, truth tables.